Tesla finally closed green today after selling off for the past couple weeks very hard, but it wasn't even that strong of a green close. And plus, if you look at the flow over here, you can see it was 93% puts to 7% calls today if you filter for over 1 million in premium. So that is very skewed to the bearish side. And not only that, we did see a very unusual print hit the tape only 43 seconds before close. You can see here it hit at 359.17 Eastern. Uh, this is for 3 million in premium for the 105 strike. So it is quite a bit out the money, um, especially because the IV is very high right now uh, because of the extended sell off and volatility. So uh, this is out the money. It shows that they really wanted to get in this position because it happened right before close, was out the money, and it's a pretty close expiration, only less than a month uh, for 12023. And if you look over here in order details, this one was at the ask. Um, so that confirms that they're most likely buying these puts uh, going forward. So looks like there may be some more downside to come for Tesla just based on uh, what we're seeing with the flow today. A lot of these were super deep in the money puts. This is a new arbitrage style strategy uh, that we're starting to see right now. So I personally don't pay attention as much to the super deep in the money puts. If you've noticed the put to call ratio uh, that you're seeing, there's a lot of people sharing like how the put to call ratio, as you can see here, is as high as it's been since like COVID or 2008 lows. Uh, part of the reason why we're seeing that is because of these types of of orders hitting the tape. It's an arbitrage strategy and therefore the put to call ratio gets very skewed to the put side. So uh, typically it's used as a contrarian indicator to go long when puts are over a certain amount. But in this case right now, it's kind of skewed just because of this new strategy that's being used. Um, so personally, I don't like to use the super deep in the money puts as much, but there's still been plenty of puts uh, today that are showing us potential of further downside, just like the one I showed you uh, for the 3 million in premium. So I'm personally watching Tesla as of now. I'm not getting into trade just because it's very volatile at the moment. If it continues to sell off, maybe it will make a good buying opportunity, especially if it gets near uh, to this trend line over here. This one goes to the lows that we made in 2019. This is a ways away from where we are right now. We're roughly at 112, and this would be about, like, say, 70, mid 70s to hit here. So, I'm not saying it has to hit. However, uh, there is some good technicals to support it potentially bouncing off of a trend line like this. And it also has a nice convergence around this prior high before we had the big crash in 2020. Um, so there's a nice convergence around this area. And obviously there's other supports along the way that it could bounce off of. Uh, but as of now, I'm personally not getting into it unless I see a very clear technical support um, structure for it. So I'm just letting it do its thing at the moment. Additionally, things are getting pretty serious with Apple. You can see here it had a pennant breakdown, which one, that's very bearish. We had a breakdown. Two, it also retested the breakdown of the pennant. As you can see here on December 21st, it retested it and got rejected very hard with a big gap down with the day following. And today, super bearish candle that printed. Uh, you can see that we fell 3%, which is quite a bit for Apple. And also, this is a candle that closed at the lows, which shows a lot of bearish emphasis going forward. Uh, so this is not looking the best. Plus, on top of it, we're below the previous low that we made uh, throughout this year. So again, not looking the best for Apple as of now. Another thing I want to note on here, if you look at a log scale chart, um, you can see here that we are in a very interesting situation here uh, with this other yellow line that I have that we broke below. This line signifies the macro trend we've been in for the past couple years now, since 2020 at least. Um, so the fact that we broke below this as well as the pennant is very critical and likely means we continue to make uh, new lows going into 2023 on Apple. Now, there could be some potential bounces here. I did share on Sunday, I expect some general bounces in the market uh, like SPY. So this could prompt some form of chop and a bounce, uh, but that would only be in the short term because as of now, it looks like going into Q1, Apple is uh, fairly bearish. And if you look over here at the flow from today, uh, filtered above 1 million in premium, 100% put flow to 0% call flow. Uh, so very bearish. Again, we did see some of these deep in the money puts for that arbitrage strategy. I'm not as concerned with those, but we did see some uh, fairly decent puts as well that are a little bit in the money, uh, but for million plus in premium on each of these. So again, looking bearish for Apple at the moment and Tesla and Apple both aren't looking the best and they're some of the largest holdings in the general market. So that can be a very concerning thing to look into 2023 for, at least for SPY as well as QQQ. SPY, if you remember the 2009 trend line that I've shared before, this is the one that goes all the way down to 2009 lows. I'll just drag over here so I can show you really quick. Uh, this goes to 2009 lows that we made a bottom. Uh, this one was the resistance we fell off of in the 2018 correction, as you can see over here, as well as the 2020 
a crash that we had. Uh, we rejected both times off this line, and recently uh, we did break below this line as of this year. Uh, we kind of danced around it as of lately. However, we retested it after being under for a bit, and it got rejected very hard and multiple weekly candles. So it looks like it's fairly bearish going forward, especially as long as we stay below this line. Um, so again, looking fairly bearish in terms of the medium and the long-term picture uh, for the next year. And again, as you guys know, I am looking for more short-term upside that could be as long as one to two, maybe even three weeks at the latest. For possible upside, it wouldn't be too extended or anything, uh, maybe just right into the low 390s. At least that's the ideal scenario that I'd like to see. Um, if that does happen, then I will end up shorting because like I said uh, earlier here, and as you guys know from this video, I am bearish going into 2023, especially the first half of it, so quarter one and quarter two, but I do not shorten the hole ever. That is one of the biggest rules that I have for myself in trading, and you guys should have your own rules, especially right now in volatile market conditions. One of the biggest rules I have is do not shorten the hole. I have to have optimal risk reward in order to enter a position, and right now, it's not good risk reward uh, to short here. And again, some technicals are pointing to some more short-term upside, so I'd like to see that. Does it have to happen? No, but personally, that's my bias, and if it does happen, then I will end up shorting it, and it'd be perfect to see something like that because like I shared in the Sunday video, there is a potential that we do see a head and shoulders, and this would be a very ideal scenario to short off of if it does happen because one risk reward is there too we have a well-known uh, bearish pattern that has been playing out a lot as of this year at least successfully so having a head and shoulders uh, it could you could argue that it already has form a head and shoulders with this high on December 21st however it's not the most ideal and there is still more time if you compare it to previous daily candles because over here you can see we had one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve days of consolidation that made the left shoulder so right now we are only halfway about of that so there's still potential we can go higher and then I could short off of that lastly for spy we did have 97% put flow to 3% call flow just from today if you filter for over 500,000 in premium nothing too insane we did see some of those super deep in the money puts as well uh, just for spy here however we did see a couple unusual prints one of which was this $557,000 out the money put this is for a 370 strike and also you can see here it's one date expiration so someone's expecting a pretty substantial move to the downside by then uh, because this one also was at the ask so very likely that they were buying these and 34,000 contracts is quite a bit 15 cents uh, for that price on there so it looks like they're expecting some substantial downside move at least into tomorrow uh, we'll see if that does end up playing out another one over here that's very weird is a 355 strike for 559,000 in premium also over 30,000 in terms of contracts that were bought and this one's only about a week away in terms of expiration so some odd orders we're starting to see these aren't over a million I like to see over a million for some more directional bias. However, seeing a $500,000 plus where we saw it one, two, and then also we saw one earlier today for three times, uh, that's pretty interesting to see it. And it's something that's on my radar because a lot of these are big bets on very short-term downside that we could see because they're within a week expiration on all of these. Uh, so I am watching that, especially if we do have some more aggressive selling like we saw in the previous weeks uh, of December here. But other than that though, I appreciate you guys watching this video and we'll see what happens for the rest of the week. It is going to be a very interesting 2023. I'm excited to see what happens during that year and I'll see you guys in the next video.